Welcome to another episode of Lightspeed Investing Podcast. Today, we've got Anthony back again. He is the CEO of Deliver Capital, and we're going to talk about the importance of personal credit as it relates to business funding. Anthony, how are you doing today, man? I am awesome and amazing. Better. Thanks for having me again. Thanks so much for being here. So you want to go ahead and let the audience know, right, like what is the topic and the high level overview of the things that we're going to do a deep dive in today, right, before we officially get started? Yeah, yeah. I, you know, I felt like the, you know, having the importance of your personal credit and how it relates to business funding, you know, it's, it's one of the most important aspects of of any type of business loan of, you know, starting a company, growing a company, scaling, no matter what stage you're at. Um, a bank is always going to look at your personal credit to really determine your character, your behavior, um, the importance of how, uh, what is the likelihood of you being able to pay back that loan by looking at your personal credit. And so really looking at that topic and really understand the foundation, you know, common mistakes, and then how we can be able to leverage and get you hundreds of thousands of dollars by just even leveraging your, your personal credit by itself. Awesome. That, that sounds amazing. And I mean, of course, you've, you've helped our organization and, you know, other organizations do the same thing as well. But if it's someone who's brand new, who don't know the language, right, where should they start? What is the foundation? Well, number one is really understanding where you're currently at in your, your journey, right? And by, um, you know, signing up with something like Experian.com, even as even a credit karma, even though I'm not a big fan of credit karma, because there's, they don't use the same scoring systems as the bank as what we call a FICO model versus a Vantage score model. So if you go to like Experian.com, it's part of the most accurate um, uh, rating as far as what your scores are and where you at in the in the whole meter. So I, I would first number one, where am I currently at? You know, where do I want to go? And what I'm going to teach you right now is a little bit the foundation of what goes inside of a credit report, how to get to an 800 credit score, you know, fairly quick. And there's a lot of little hacks and and elements that how you can achieve that pretty quickly. Okay, yeah, sounds great. Let's dive into it. Well, first and foremost, I guess. What exactly makes Experian so much different than FICO, right? Since you were addressing, you know, well, making, have the well, Experian is, is, a, is a credit bureau. And I apologize about that. Um, so Experian is a is a credit bureau, right? One of the main three that that we uh, that we review. And so, but Experian also has a certain a product called you know, spearing.com, which you're able to see and monitor your, your credit report. You can use it for free or you can do the pay subscription and look at all three once a month, you know, from the angle. So it's, it's, it serves both, both aspects of it. Gotcha. Okay. And then you said uh, there is a foundation, right? That's important to building uh, before being able to acquire an 800 credit score. What does that look like? Yeah. So, so if we look at what I call the perfect credit formula, right, how to get to an 800 credit score, one of the first things that you have to understand is, you know, what is the mixture of and the types of credit that I currently have? Well, we call them trade lines in, in, in our, in our language, in our, in our keywords. Um, so you have, you know, a mortgage loan, an auto loan, an installment loan, and then you have credit card revolving accounts. Now the age of these accounts makes a huge difference, right? The longer of establishment, the higher the score goes up. Um, in, in finance and everything, credits and 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 taxes, everything we always always come with the law of two. So you want to have a minimum of two years age, with two minimum trade lines, right? right? At very very minimum, this is what the banks look for. Some require four, but the majority require a minimum of two. So the longer that establishment is going to help you because it creates that track record and that history of your performance, your behavior, your payments history, et cetera. From that point, the next part of that is your credit utilization. Um, so you don't want to be above a 30% utilization with your credit cards. So for an example, if you have a $10,000 limit, you shouldn't be more than a $3,000 balance, right? It's a 30% ratio. If you go above that 30%, it could actually affect your score negatively. Um, but worse, by applying with a high credit usage, you'll get denied with a lot of these lenders, especially right now in this so-called recession that we're in. Um it, they they want you to look as pretty as possible from that. So creeping keeping that at uh, below thirty percent, not just your overall credit utilization, but the individual ones as well. So if you have five credit cards, make sure that each one of those five are below that thirty percent mark before you apply for any type of loan out there. Okay, and one of the most important aspects of all this is your payment history. 
So no lates, collection, charge-offs, bankruptcies. This can all stay on for about seven to 10 years mm -hmm. on your credit report. So I want you guys to all be systems dependent, not human dependent, right? What do I mean by that? So put everything on auto pay, even the minimum monthly payment, even that $20 a month and that credit card payment, put it on auto pay. You want to get it out of your mind and just have it, the system just automatically go. And they could always pay more, but if you go on vacation for a month or there's some you know, emergency or some sort, and you're not thinking about making that payment on the first or the 15th of the, of the month, that 30 day late can drop your score a hundred points. Just mm -hmm. one late. You make it very, very hard to get up, very easy to get down. Mm -hmm. So you want to be systems dependent on that. Probably one of the most important things. Um, it's much easier for us to um, fix somebody with high credit usage versus removing a late. So at all cost, I'd rather have you pay your credit cards versus paying your rent um, <laughs> if needed, though, because there's a lot of things that you can do to stimulate money so that you can make that money to pay the rent, right? It's a lot more of like your insurance policy there. Mm -hmm. um, and last but not least is your credit inquiries. Number mm -hmm. one, rule of thumb is no more than six inquiries per six months. So within the six-month period, you know, with every single bureau, you don't want to have more than six, you know, inquiries. Even, it doesn't matter. Essentially, like once a month, basically. One inquiry a month, right? It doesn't matter about once a month or or elements, right? It's it's about the number of inquiries within that that period is what the bank will really look at and zone in. Plus, every credit every inquiry could be worth one to eight points for for your credit score. Gotcha. Um, you know, I remember I, I was I was applying for a hundred thousand uh, dollar Chase business credit card just recently, um, and within two of my different companies, and the the one credit the one application that I did and, you know, dropped my score about two points, but then they needed to do a second one. That second one dropped me eight points. Right. And then, and then even the third one that they did, because it took about an, a month or two months after dropped another eight points. That was like 18, 16, 18 points that it got reduced just from that by itself. So it's a very, it's a very big impact. Mm -hmm. um, you know, it's actually one of the problems that I solved that we created this company called inquiry removers that removes your credit inquiries automatically within weeks um, and you don't pay anything up front. We charge $20 an inquiry, right? Because part of my whole company is like, hey, if there's any challenges or problems with any of these type of ch uh, challenges that we we come across, what can we do to fix that? And that's what we created Ink Removers um, to be able to, you know, to fix that. That's as well. really, that's huge, man. Because that hard inquiry is like a stamp of, you know, like usage, basically, you know, and, and if you are able to remove that for $20, you know, per, I mean, that's, Life-changing, honestly. And, and we, we work for free until until we actually get results. So you pay nothing until mm -hmm. you get the results, and then that's when you, you pay us. So one of the only companies right now that doesn't charge anything up front, AI automated technology that will remove it for us, mm -hmm. um, allows us to be been, been very successful. Fun to, I think we removed over 100,000 inquiries in the last two or three years. So pretty pretty substantial. Is that something that's, that's recently new, or was that always around? You know, Well, removing, disputing inquiries has always been, been around. Uh, we're the first automated AI technology that just removes it specifically just for, for inquiries. You know, for that, that's huge. Like, and that's what I'm saying. Is that recently for you, like a big project that you, that one that you've been working on. Yeah. Um, I mean, we're, we're, we're the company and where we're going on how I raise my, you know, over a million dollars in credit lines um, has been reinvested back into technology to automate what we're currently doing. Yeah, Cause I don't think we, you mentioned this when I first met you, if, if I recall correctly, right. Like that wasn't in place yet. We have a lot of things that, that, that we do and how we help people, right? Just in the short period of time. So most likely, no, I, I don't think we did. Uh, wow, yeah, yeah. That, no, but that, that shows the evolution and just development. I mean, I've only known Anthony for about six months and, and I mean, this is amazing, right? So yeah. that's fantastic to hear. Yeah, yeah, we're building actually the first credit engine for the people, not for, for the banks where yeah. you can predict the likelihood of you getting approved before you do a submission. So very cool things that's coming out here uh, this year on how we're able to really disrupt and help people get access to, to Well, and actually, you know, with, with that, I just really quick, because this is kind of relevant to the economic landscape. Like, what do you think um, this system and how you navigate it, you know, will be affected if the U.S. currency does uh, no longer holds its position, right, as the number one currency in the world? Are you going to basically still have the same approaches or will you also need to, you know, um, um, get adjusted accordingly? Well, I mean, if you're looking at the global aspect of the economy of, of, of the world and currencies and, you know, new world order and who's going to be the, 
you know, the main top leader now, if it's, you know, America does fall in second position, for example. Um, I think for, for me, right, of working with the banks, funded over 100 million, I understand exactly what these banks look for and how to get people approved. The, the real question is exactly is, will banks still lend, regardless of what's going on in, in the world, will banks still lend for small business? And of course it is, right? There's 33 million business owners in America right now. Um, and people need money and banks need to lend in order for them to be in business. So it's kind of a, a mm. an element of that. Because most likely because of the interest rates. That yeah, how they, that's how they make their money, right? Is the interest of, you know, loaning you, right? They want your money and deposits in, in the bank, right? And their savings and checking and whatever they can do to get that. And then the feds will leverage that. And then they lend that money back to you. So it's kind of a little bit of this little crazy right. cycle for how these banks work. Uh, but yes, it, I don't think that's going to really affect me if there's a new, you know, global economy and currencies and things of that nature. Cool. Um, the real question is that how is America and its capital systems working, and the ability for the Feds to lend back out, you know, the interest rates and prime and and all that kind of stuff, which will affect how uh, banks lend. I see. You know, from that angle. Yeah. yeah. So. So, so the last part of that all that is the inquiries. No more than six inquiries per six months. The next phase is actually. 12 months for the, the weight of your inquiries. And after the 12 months, isn't as, as much of an impact, you know, for, for somebody's, uh, you know, credit report, but these are all the main fine factors that, you know, on higher level that will go into um, your credit score and how you can increase, like we've increased somebody's credit score from a 650 to a 750 to just applying this perfect credit formula that I just mentioned to you. That's amazing, man. That's great. And so, you know, obviously, it's always important to talk about foundations, right, which is what we covered. Um, let's move on and talk about what are the most common mistakes that you see that actually get applicants denied? Well, I would say one of the number one challenges that we face um, is high credit usage, right? Okay. And so that whole credit utilization of your being above that 30% mark, where, you know, in today's day, right, there's... You know, the, the economy is maybe isn't as strong. There's this whole call recession and stuff. And um, people haven't set up their businesses properly and acquired business capital because business credit doesn't show up on your personal credit. Mm -hmm. And so when you're starting a business and you don't have the business credit, what are you going to do if you need money? You're going to tap into your personal, personal assets, personal credit, and they start using the credit card. Now, things don't go so well for a month or two or whatever. They start to really rack up those 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 payments. And when you have a 50, 60, 70, 80% credit usage on your personal credit, that shows a bank that, hey, you're in trouble. Mm. So we developed like 10 different ways on how to resolve that, right? If I can, if I can get that resolved quickly, the faster I can get you into compliance, the faster I can get you into funding, you know, you know from that angle. Right. right. And so there's little things that you can do, like your balance transfers between one card that's paid off and zero, ones that maxed out, just balancing it out from over there, applying for a new business credit card that you can shift the debt from personal to business, uh, you know, uh, borrowing from friends and family temporarily until your score shoots up and then you apply and get your own business credit and pay them back. A lot of creativity that goes into my experience of really helping people from that, from that aspect. And there's, 10 different ways that you can do it, depending on where you're at and what you have access to and your resources. So that's kind of one of the number one things that we deal with. Yeah. Um, um, number two, I would say your payment history. Uh, you know, if you have lays, collection, charge-offs, we have a whole department dedicated in credit optimization. Okay. Uh, since I used to own a credit repair company back, you know, about a decade ago, um, I have the resources and the contacts to help remove collections and charge-offs and, and those type of elements. Um, because if that's the only thing that's stopping you from getting a hundred thousand dollars, then I'm going to make sure that I help you and say, Hey, if I can remove that and optimize your credit, then that's going to help with the probability of your, of your successful uh, approvals. And so, you know, number two, I would say the payment history is a very big factor, you know, from that, um, the, the inquiries, right. This is for ink removers. We've already solved that issue. Um, so, you know, when you look at the, the perfect credit formula and there's always these elements of what what are the challenges related to all one of those topics? Um, you know, a, another great little little mini hack is that authorized users. Um, so if you don't have, you know, the two minimum trade lines or your scores around a 680, you need to be around that 720, 
you know, range for, for applying for credit cards, adding yourself to somebody else's credit card, which is a high limit and low balance and a long of establishments can really increase your score five to 30 points, you know, every account. Now just note that you apply, um, you, you get an authorized user and that $50,000 authorized user doesn't mean that the bank's going to lend you a, a credit card approval for that 50,000, right? It just helps with the perception of that, but it boosts up your scores enough for you to be, get approved, you know, from that. And so those are the kind of the common mistakes that, um, that we come across and we have to work towards and just kind of fine tuning those, Hey, which one of these are going to be the main thing that we need to focus on? It's going to move the needle the fastest for that approval for you, right? Cause you want to mm. start a business, grow a business. And of course there's three reasons why businesses fail. And number one reason is that if you're, you're out of money, Right. And right. so, so that's where we come in. We can stimulate and find money without having to, you know, beg investors. And, and a big, um, big theme that you always say, right? Cash is king, but credit is queen. Right. So you got to make sure you, you still have to pay her back. Yeah. Right. Cash right. is king, credit is the queen. You still have to right. pay her back. Yeah. That's right. So as long as you have a great plan, yeah. right. And, and how you're going to deploy that money. If I get you a hundred thousand tomorrow, like how fast is it going to take you? to put that 100,000 to work so that you can make 150 very quickly, right? right? And so that, that's really one of the key foundations is we embed a lot of business advisory elements into the use of funds, mm. uh, you, know, you know, for you. Yeah, and that's super important, obviously, uh, having someone experienced with a proven track record to, you know, look over your shoulders and essentially consult you, right, on, hey, here's certain things that you should watch out for in terms of potential pitfalls, and here's how we can remedy your current situation, right? If you're kind of uh, in a rut. So uh, that's amazing, man. And and then I think the last point that we uh, need to discuss today to finish off, you know, um, uh, this topic is, is really the importance of leveraging personal credit so that you can acquire a hundred k in startup capital, right? Which, uh, as you alluded to just now, right? It's a huge. Uh, a boost for any business owners or entrepreneur looking yeah. to get their feet wet or, or, or I mean, even if you're seasoned, right? Uh, even better because you have experience, you can actually deploy that capital to certain resources that you know will work. And then you can basically get a huge ROI and expand your company in a much more compressed time frame, right? Yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, you know, again, when you're, when you apply the perfect credit formula and you look at those common mistakes and you correct them, and you say, okay, now I'm in this stage where I can get funding. So, you know, for us, we have different stages of, of um, a client, right? If you right. only, if you have credit with no revenue, I can still get you funded, right? If you have your personal credit very strong and you have some personal income that you can prove, that can enable some more additional funding. But if you have your personal credit, personal income, and business cash flow, like you know, bank statements and some cash flow flowing, we can get you even more money. But mm -hmm. even out at the basis, even for the startups, where you want to leverage, let's just say, zero percent interest free capital for twelve to eighteen months, okay. and you know, it's one of the the practices that we do is that we we know exactly which bank pulls which credit bureau, mm -hmm. and we know how to separate. You know, the American Expresses with the Chases and the Bank of America and the U.S. banks and depending on where you're at, regional banks, uh, community banks, and then, of course, the nationals. Right. And so, you know, one of the one of the major elements is that, hey, your highest revolving limit on your credit cards, right? So you have five credit cards and the highest one that you have is around a $20,000 limit. That kind of sets the benchmark of your approvals when you apply for business credits. So mm -hmm. basically, look at your your credit reports like your resume. You're gonna mm -hmm. review the resume and see does this right. person have is it just a score or is it just what's well, behind the score as well, which is very important. Right? Hence, the perfect credit formula. Now, if you have let's just say, um, you know, fifteen thousand, twenty thousand, twenty five thousand, et cetera, and you're like, hey, I need a hundred thousand. Well, I would go and apply with four or five different banks and separate the inquiries on each bureau, right? Citibank. American Express, you know, B of A, like B of A will pull a TransUnion, American Express will pull Experian, and Citibank will pull an Equifax. Wow. Right? Like, the two. Like, what are these little industry nuances and know-hows. Right. And if you just go, for an example, and you just apply for four or five banks and only pull Experian, then right. then you're hitting that that more than like the five, six inquiries within that short period of time. And now now you're dead out of water, and then you had to go and 
fix those inquiries. Yeah. So by optimizing your credit at the, at the highest peak, right? Low utilization, low inquiries, high trade lines, et cetera. Um, and then go and applying for multiple accounts and that can get you to a hundred, you know, thousand. Or if you have personal income, you can, especially for startups, personal uh, loans right. is a very cheap um, type of loan that you can get versus a, a high interest rate business loan, especially in, in, in the early stage. And also 0%, you know, a 12 to 18 month, you know, interest-free capital. So by utilizing that element of knowing exactly which bank to do, but maximizing your your credit, let's just say that you have $10,000 is your highest revolving limit and you need a hundred thousand. Well, it means you're probably going to have to go to maybe, you know, six, seven, 10 different banks or credit cards to be able to hit that, that target, right? Think about the end in mind, reverse engineer, right? right? Clearly, we are what we want the fast ways to get there. What's that plan? And so by optimizing it and then just saying, I want to go ahead and apply with all of these will help us get there to, to that target faster. And we've gotten people like at least like 200, 200, $300,000 just in even credit cards, yep. you know, before, but how we're able to leverage and work our banking systems, you know, mm -hmm. from that angle. So that's, that's right. kind of why I would, I would set it up, especially if you're a startup. Um, but, but again, we could all use interest-free, you know, free money, right. From, from these banks, play yeah. this, right. Don't let the play, don't let the system play you. Yep. That's right. And so if you are curious of learning how you can do it the right way, right. Like Anthony said, play the system and not let the system play you, uh, feel free to contact Anthony at deliver capital, right. And, uh, uh, uh delivercapital.com. Is there any other methods for them to reach you at as well? Yeah, look, I do a lot of uh, trainings on my YouTube, right, for Deliver Capital. Uh, if you want to follow me on uh, Instagram uh, at Anthony Venaki. Um, so, you know, TikTok and and uh, Instagram is Anthony Venaki and uh, Facebook and uh, YouTube is Deliver Capital, you know, from that angle. But DeliverCapital.com, if you want to get in touch with us, we do a free consultation. We'll do a whole deep dive, review exactly where you're at, provide you a full detailed report for free. Um, and if that's something, if we if we feel that there is a path of success for you, we'll be able to let you know, hey, this is what it looks like. This is what we can get you. Um, even if, if if it's not, then we'll be, be able to tell you exactly what you need to do to get yourself into compliance. Uh, and that requires either our help or without our help, we'll still tell you exactly what needs to happen. Yeah, super important. And so impactful. And the best part about Anthony is he gets it done, you know, uh, myself included, as well as several people who I have sent over his way. You know, we have all experienced tremendous results. And that's why he is a very valued and dear guest of our podcast. So with that, Anthony, I look forward to bringing you back on again. You know, this is a never stopping train with you. And you are just a treasure trove of knowledge. Thank and uh, I will see you again next time. Okay. Thank you, guys. Appreciate it. All right. Thank you.